from the oddly funny studios in Detroit, Michigan. It's everyone's favorite comedian game show, Bombing Run. Yay. 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 Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna go over the how this game works real quick. How this game works is three comedians do their five minute sets while the mysterious judge decides who's first place Joker A, second and third. The judge is looking for your setup punch of the jokes and your appearance in front of the, your camera. Remember, the audience is in front of you, not off to the side. <laughs> and uh, yes, please. Or if you're using your phone, please do not point it to your nose. No one wants to see or count your nose hairs. All right. Uh, with that being said, I want everyone to please welcome the mysterious judge for the night, Judge Secret Host, everybody. Woo! -hoo! I seriously went all out to get this judge. Now, secret host. In fact, I had to go become a secret agent. And I still, I only know him by a number, uh, them by a number. It's like 008008. Uh, I don't remember the, all the numbers. They said they have spied on enough comedy, they know what they're looking for. And they got a license to make people laugh. So that's what that is. So the order for tonight is going to be Jade Esteban Estrada, Alicia Rain, and Chris Crawford. All right. And also, I want you guys to please give my co-producer a big, big round of applause, Sergeant of Arms. Yeah. Sergeant of Arms makes this show run so smoothly as I would make it look like it's run over by gravel. All right. So. We're going to get to our first comedian, comedian of the night. Please welcome to the stage, Jade Esteban Estrada, everybody. Woo, 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 woo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Before we get started, I know some of you are looking at my lips and looking at my lashes and thinking to yourself, great. Another one of those freaking Trump supporters. <laughs> <laughs> I get that a lot. My name is Jade Esteban Estrada. They call me the Prada Enchilada. <laughs> Designer on the outside, cheesy on the inside, but let's be honest, I'd rather be stuffed with meat. <laughs> I hail from San Antonio, Texas. Great, nobody gives a shit. <laughs> Yeah. You may have already noticed that I am openly Mexican. <laughs> Homo estas. <laughs> you know, it's still tough out there for us gay Mexicans because some people actually choose to come out of the closet. I was chased <laughs> out by the roaches. <laughs> oh. How do you like my how do you like my lips by the way? All right. Love it. Anyone? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Hey, I, I blew a unicorn on the way over here. <laughs> <laughs> the name of the lipstick is But Officer. <laughs> <laughs> and I was supposed to wear this outfit to my sister's wedding this past weekend, but I got there late and I missed the entire ceremony. Oof. She was pissed. She was like, I can't believe you missed my wedding. I was like, yeah, girl, don't worry. I'll go to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in my travels, I've noticed that people have a strange view of us Texans. Case in point, a couple years ago, I was at a cafe in Italy grabbing an espresso. And the cashier, hearing my accent, asks me where I'm from. When I told him Texas, his eyes lit up with excitement and he goes, Mamma mia, Texas. A bang, a bang, a bang, a bang, a bang. <laughs> Apparently, our branding is Yosemite Sam, <laughs> a cartoon with anger management issues. <laughs> but as you may know, Texas is an open carry state, which means it is perfectly legal for folks to walk around with a loaded pistol on their person which kind of takes the fun out of foreplay, doesn't it? 
<laughs> I could be like, hey, cowboy, is that a gun in your pocket? You just never mind. It's a gun. It's a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Sun's out. Gun's out. Am I right, freedom lovers? <laughs> right. No. You know, I've been doing a lot of dating, um, trying to get myself out there. I recently dated um, another Mexican guy, but it didn't work out. No, no. He was the one that got away. <laughs> you know, I do consider myself to be Latino, but growing up, I wasn't taught Spanish, which was problematic because later on in life, I lived in Spanish Harlem in New York. And mm. there I was surrounded by Puerto Ricans and Dominicans who would greet me with, Hola, papi, como estas? My mm. Spanish was so bad, I'd be like, Enchante. <laughs> <laughs> which of course I know now means where's the bathroom. <laughs> a couple of years after that, I was um, doing a show in Acapulco and I did an early morning radio show to promote the show later on that night. And this guy asks me on the air in Spanish, are you happy to be in Acapulco? I said, si, sí, estoy muy, muy excitado. <laughs> well, his eyes got really big and he goes, you mean emocionado, right? And I said, no, 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 no. I said, estoy muy, muy, muy excitado. <laughs> well, I found out during the commercial break that excitado over there exclusively means sexually stimulated. <laughs> so, all of a sudden I'm dubbed the horny guy on the radio. Got the whole station in trouble. They were like, do you have anything to say for yourself? I was like, oh, Chante. <laughs> so, who, who out there has like crazy family anybody come from a crazy crazy family Woo! Mm -hmm. Woo! yeah no but yeah yeah as we say in texas can't live with them can't shoot them <laughs> i have a very i have a very diverse family my sister's a hardcore christian my brother's a right-wing conspiracy theorist gay Mexican comedian was the only thing that was left. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, getting older and having the whole experience of living life and living, you know, as you get older, you, you start to realize that, that you can't rely on things like you used to. Like the body starts breaking down. Like I'm still trying to get rid of this quarantine weight I put on in 2007. Oh. Did I, I'm sorry, did I get the light? Yes, yes you did. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Uh, don't forget to moisturize, stay safe. And as we say, Texas, enchanté. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's give it up for Jade Esteban Estrada. And Jade, where can we find you on social media? You can find me on social media um, on Instagram, Jade Esteban Estrada. Uh, Twitter, Get Jaded. On, on, on Facebook, Jade Esteban Estrada. And my website is getjaded.com. Cool. And are you doing a live mics right now? The next big live show I have is I'll be headlining the El Paso comedy strip Ooh. on Halloween weekend, the mm. October 28th, 29th and 30th. And I'm really excited about that because I haven't been there in a couple of years. Sweet. That sounds great. Woo. Thank you so much, Jade. Oh Thanks. my gosh. Yes. We all come from crazy families, don't we? Both sides of my family were alcoholics. But you know what? Alcoholism does skip a generation. My generation is considered the designated drivers. <laughs> yeah, we're teetotalers to the to the death. Oh. Anyway, okay, secret host who doesn't have a license to kill except on stage. Oh, you're ready for the next comedian. Oh my gosh. Apparently, they're efficient at going through comedians. That's kind of scary, isn't it? So please welcome to the stage, our second com comedian for the night. Please welcome Alicia Rain, everybody. Woo, woo, woo. woo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm Alicia Rain, and um, Jade uh, was talking about uh, guns, open carry laws, and I'm from South Dakota, and so they love that stuff here. Uh, <laughs> one of the things that's a very popular here, there's a lot of libertarians. 
here. And so they are the extreme hold my beer of gun owners for sure. Like, whatever you're bringing to the table, they're going to top it. Okay. You're bringing one pistol. They've got 20 pistols. Okay. <laughs> you're bringing a shotgun. They've got a sawed off shotgun. Okay. You oh. bring a rifle. They've already shot you because you're on their property. Okay. That's <laughs> the extreme of a uh, South Dakota. So uh, for me, I do have uh, a little bone to pick. There's been something that's been bugging me for a while. And I think some of you will agree with me that journeys don't stop believing is the actual national anthem. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is true. I can prove it to you. Okay. One thing during the national anthem, you are standing. During mm -hmm. journeys, don't stop believing that plays the seventh inning, you are also standing. Hmm. I believe you were actually standing to go to the bathroom, but you're still standing. You're still standing. And the first thing I should have said, the national anthem does play at every sporting event. So does Journeys Don't Stop Believing. Okay, my point, my point is almost proved. But the one thing that is different is that during the national anthem, you know, your hand is on your heart, your hat is off. Some people, maybe there's a tear shed here and there. What a bummer. Bummer trails, you guys. During journeys, don't stop believing. You're dancing, you're singing, you're kiss camming, you're drinking a beer. You can't drink a beer during the national anthem. <laughs> I know. They get mad at you. You know what else you can't do? You know what else you can't do during the national anthem? You can't shotgun a beer during the national anthem. Oh, no. no. They will kick you out. Yeah. Yep. It's a good time. I, um, <laughs> I, uh, yep. I'm originally from uh, South Dakota. Uh, which is basically one of the only flyover states that anyone would willingly go to. <laughs> because we have Mount Rushmore, uh, which is basically a monument, right? Uh, which is basically just a statue that can't be torn down in rage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's on the west side of the state. I live on the east side of the state, which is just farming, hunting, and meth. <laughs> Our state motto is actually meth. We're on it. <laughs> I, wish, I wish that wasn't true uh, or that we were on CNN because of it. <laughs> we were. And it is. It's oh. too bad. Um, yeah, I don't know how much time I have. I'm sorry, Aaron. Got about a minute left right now one minute okay yep. um I, I like to do uh funny little impressions uh and so this is my impression of young keanu reeves the very the very prolific and talented actor young keanu reeves whoa okay we all saw it coming we mm -hmm. saw it coming that was that <laughs> keanu reeves done right okay but now I'm going to do an impression of Keanu Reeves now. Okay. Mm. No. Okay. <laughs> you guys, that was so dead on. That was dead on. My goodness. That guy has a huge range. I'm Alicia Rain, you guys. Thank you so much. Let's give it up for Alicia Rain, everybody. Now, Alicia, where can we find you on social media? Um, uh, at Alicia Rain on Instagram, at Alicia Rain 2 on Twitter. Um, I uh, have the Buzzline Facebook page, which is where a lot of my comedy stuff is. And then the Wish You Were Here online comedy showcase. Uh, the first show is going to actually start October 17th. So, first live yeah. show? Um, my first online show of the oh. fall. 
Oh, online of the fall. Cool. Yes, yeah. that's a cool show. Go check that out. She is so amazing. Are you doing any live shows? I didn't get a chance to ask that. Uh, not at the moment. Nothing scheduled, but that's okay. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. You know, you said you went to the only flyover state people want to go to. Well, I'll, ta I'll take a, take that up with you. I actually went to the entertainment capital of the world this summer. You know, Omaha, Nebraska. And you know what they say about Omaha, Nebraska, right? Well, you guys, can you tell me? Because I have no clue. I have no idea what they say about <laughs> Omaha, Nebraska. Right. <laughs> I think I did. It, it was for a comedy show. It was a great show. I met a lot of my friends I've seen on Zoom, and they, they were so awesome. That Let me host. Imagine that. That was so much fun. All right. Secret host. Secret host is ready for the next comedian he is just they well okay he or they are just killing it all right i was gonna say that what <laughs> i didn't reveal your name no 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 you don't have to come here no 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 that's okay that's okay Whew, glad glad they're about 500 miles away from me right now what do you mean you're on my at my doorstep all right well let's get to the next comedian shall we please welcome our third contestant for the night Please welcome Chris Crawford, everybody. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Oh, what's up, Zoomland? Like you said, I am Chris Crawford. And I can tell by the look on your face that does not impress you. So I'm going to reintroduce myself, give you some uh, credits you might actually care about. What you have in front of you is a man with two HBO specials, one Showtime special, and two Comedy Central highlights. All recorded on my DVR at home, and I can't wait to get there to watch them. <laughs> now, you don't know who the heck I am. I'm going to tell you, though, just like a vegan would tell you, or just like a CrossFitter will tell you who the heck they are, or a guy with the word veteran written on his shirt wants you to know who he is. Now, the Air Force, believe it or not, kept me around for 20 years, and it may be a very special type of veteran, the type of veteran that believes the word veteran should never be abbreviated to the word vet. You see, vet can mean so many things. It can mean prior service member. It can mean animal doctor. It can mean Corvette. It can even mean a person who has a lot of experience in their profession. Now, my father-in-law, he was in the service. So was his dog. So in theory, I, as a vet, could help a vet, take his vet to the vet in a vet. Like a vet! <laughs> <laughs> so you guys look at me like, how did I get on this show? And I'll tell you, I was vetted. <sighs> <laughs> now, uh, like most military people who live in San Angelo, Texas, I'm not actually from here. I'm a transplant. So when I go home for the holidays, I really have to go somewhere. And I go all the way back to a place called Cooter, Missouri. Mm. Funny sounding place. And it's nice in a backwoods, rednecky sort of way. But you know, I do love being a Cooter. I'll tell you that all day. Now, <laughs> the last time, I, last time I went home, me and my family, we took a trip over to the department store, like we always do. Now, it's the only department store in Cooter. And when I say department store, I mean the Dollar General. When I say my family, I mean my family. I'm talking about my nieces, my nephews, my aunts, my uncles, my grandma, my grandpa, my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, my kids, and my wife. One great big redneck mecca right over to the great department store of Cooter, Missouri. Now, the last time we made that trip, my youngest daughter, she began to act out, you know, the way they do. And I was going to try and crush it at the lowest level, bend down, have a conversation with her. But before I get too far into that, I'll tell you, military members, depending on when they serve, they have their own world problems to think about, their own war. Mine happened to be the war on terrorism. With that came some common misconceptions. People believe that Middle Easterners raise their kids to be terrorists. That's not true. All kids are terrorists. <laughs> Just in America, we like to train it out of them. Now let me get, <laughs> get back to my conversation with my child. I got down about eye level. She began to make demands. Well, I don't negotiate with terrorists. So I scoop her little butt up and I take her out to the car. That's the known consequence. She doesn't want that. So she's fighting and squirming a little bit. So like any good dad would, I threw up over my shoulder and I quickened my pace. Then she began to really fight me. Arms this way, legs that way, really giving me help. And I'm okay with this. But then my child, she did the unthinkable. In public, she cried for help. She was all, help me, call me, call me, call me, help me. <laughs> now, think about this, Zoomland. I'm a middle-aged man. You're a small community. You don't know me. I'm damn near running for the door with a small child draped over my shoulder, kicking and flailing, fighting for its life, talking about, help, 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 help me. <laughs> man, in Texas, I'd have been shot. <laughs> I couldn't get out that door quick enough. 
I damn near sprinted across the parking lot, got to the car, opened the car door. I went to put her in. She didn't want to go in. She's holding on to the door frame with all four limbs like this. And I'm pushing on her torso, pushing on her torso. Put her little <laughs> limbs, they just give out. Get into the car seat, tear down, get damn hostage. Stand <laughs> up, look around, hundreds of spectators. Some might call them witnesses. <laughs> but you know, not a single one of them challenged me. You know why? Because they know all kids are terrorists, not to be negotiated with. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> You guys nod and look at me like that, like it's true. It's not true. We do negotiate with our kids. In fact, we give them their own rules to play by. For example, if a child was to throw out its arms and run into the room and go, pop, 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 look up and declare, I'm a helicopter. You know what you'll tell that kid? Yeah, you are. You can be anything you want to be. But Lord forbid, I, as a grown ass man, should throw out my arms, run into a room, and go, pop, 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 pop. <laughs> People say mean things like, get away from me, or we should see other people. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Speaking of seeing other people, I think it's about that time. Thank you guys so much. I'm Chris Crawford. Let's give Chris Crawford a big round of applause, shall we? And Chris, where can we find you on social media? Oh, you can find me uh, at Christopher.m.Crawford1. Uh, that's on Instagram. You can find me at Chris Crawford's comedy.com. And uh, yeah, just Chris Crawford on Facebook. That's it. Cool. And you got some shows coming up. I do. I'm a, uh, I've been pretty busy recently. I will tell you the next one I have is going to take me to Dallas. I'm going to be on rocking the red carpet. It's a mm -hmm. big music festival. I think Warrant is headlining it. That's kind of cool. In fact, it's really cool. I mean, if I don't downplay it, but, uh, but no, I'm actually very excited to go up and be around people that are way more famous than me and uh, let them uh, throw the stage my way for a little while. Right. And uh, I, I met Chris over on the uh, Linda Marcus show. It's at, it's uh, veterans for comedians, right? Am I right? Uh, on that? Yes. Veterans for comedians. We do that every Saturday and Sunday at one o'clock central time or 1300 for you military types. And uh, if you're on the Pacific, you're two hours behind me. If you're on the Eastern, you're one hour ahead of me. Right. And I got to be on that because I, not necessarily a military brat, but I was born into the service. My dad never left Nam, I don't think. So yeah. I had to say yes, sir, as soon as I got out of the womb. Yeah, um, absolutely. We have a Bob Hope spot, and you were absolutely spot on for that. And our Bob Hope spot allows someone that is not military to play with uh, to play with us. So yes, thank I, you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. I am on this Saturday. Check it out. I have 10 minutes to fill, and it's all going to be clean. Because that's how I do my shows, it's clean. All right. Uh, secret host. You have the toughest job of the night. You know, it's not mine talking to the comics. It's not Sergeant at Arms spotlighting everybody and me. It's your job. Okay. Okay. All right. And I will pay you an undisclosed cash. No, I'm not. There's no money in this. I hate to say this. There's no money involved, but I want to give everybody a big. Round of applause for playing tonight. Thank you so much for being here tonight. You guys are all awesome comedians. And uh, I've worked with all of you in one way or another, been on an open mic, or you've been on my show, or I've been on someone else's show. You guys are all awesome. And it was a tough decision from what I'm understanding here. So, winner of Bombing Run tonight is... Dave Esteban Estrada, everybody. Woo, 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 woo. All right, Dave. All right, so we're going to get together after the show, and we're going to figure out a date. It's probably about November, just to let you know, because it's every other Saturday now. So, cool. We'll get wow. together, and we'll get that set up. That awesome. That was hard. That, this is a great show. Thank you. All right, second place is Chris Crawford, everybody. Woo, 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 woo. Thank, Thank you, so Chris. You rock. I, I You are awesome. I, I think you guys, you were so cool. I've heard your set, and I love it. You are, you're a, a stand-up kind of guy. I really appreciate you being on the show. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Thank you. And third place, it happens. It happens. She has won this show, folks. She has won this before. She came in third tonight. Just that's the way it is. Secret host decided. 
Alicia Rain, give her a big round of applause for showing up tonight. What up, Alicia? She was so good at riffing right after stage set. She just went right into it, and I loved that part. She was doing so well tonight. I know it was close. And if you guys want your notes about how your set went, please talk to me after the show. DM me on Facebook, and I will get the notes from the judge of what worked, what didn't work, and we'll get them to you. But that was the show for tonight, guys. Thank you for being part of the show. And next Wednesday when I record this, will be three new comedians and another mysterious judge. So for me, Secret Host and Sergeant Arms, this has been an oddly funny production. Thank you, everybody. This has been an oddly funny production.